Hello, it's Sunny and Shay here on BBC Two Five Point Six. Now, Birmingham band editors are usually found performing to sell out crowds around the world, mm. but the band took on a different trip recently as they visited Serbia to see firsthand what the charity Oxfam are doing there to help support refugees in the country. This is very much part of World Refugee uh, Refugee Day, which Oxfam launched as a summer campaign. And I'm really chuffed to say that editors drummer Ed Lay is here to tell us more about it. Ed, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's really good to, to come on. So, hi. Uh, uh, I have to ask you, Ed, uh, you know, uh, you are known for, you know, traveling and I guess the summer season would be one of your peak seasons when you sh uh, are out there gigging and maybe going festivals. Yeah. So uh, how did you guys get involved with Oxfam and uh, going to Serbia? Well, uh, we've kind of had a presence of Oxfam at our shows for years, actually. We've right. been sort of linked to them. They've been our sort of charity of choice for because we feel that they really you know, they go to the right places, they do the right things in terms of what uh, the sort of groups that we want to get behind. So we've had a sort of long-standing relationship. And a couple of years back, we were asked if we'd like to go on a trip. And it's a really difficult thing to say yes to, not only because of time constraints mm. and things like that, but actually, can we take it on a personal level? Can we, uh, have we got like the strength to go out and and go to a really oppressed place and meet people who, whose lives are, you know, they, they're a struggle from one moment to the next. Yeah. It's kind of, how did we have that within ourselves to do it? But we've decided to go, and I don't know, I think we, the three of us that went, felt really enlightened by meeting the, the ladies that we did in, in the camps in, in Greece that on that trip. And yeah. um, on this occasion, we were asked back to a, um, take time out of our schedule. We were, we were playing a, a show in Serbia, had a festival on, and uh, we were asked to go and see if we could go near Belgrade and, and visit a very different camp full of um, full of sort of young males, very similar to ourselves, who sort of have the same interests and, and wants and needs, but they are in a position where they're stuck in a country that's not theirs and they're looking for, uh, you know, for a better life for them and their families. Mm. And, uh, you know, when you went out there, and uh, it was very important, I guess, to uh, just see that this is a a crisis across the world in different parts of the world we are looking at uh, uh, people are uh, displaced from their home for whatever reason what were some of the stories that you heard that you could relate to even though you can't sort of like understand the what the trauma that they're going through sure but i mean we all have family of course whether whether we've got uh, children of our own or whether we've got um, relations that we're we're very uh, very uh, dear to us or you know even close friends that and you can imagine having something in your life, having an event out of your control that means that you're feeling completely unsafe. I mean, it's it's one of these situations you wouldn't wish it upon anybody and you can't actually really get to grips with how it feels unless you're in the situation. So it's all about trying to conjure up as, as much empathy as possible, really, and uh, and just see the world through these, these really normal people's lives. Um, and it's lovely to chat to them. That's the thing that we're so lucky to have. We, you know, we've actually sort of put names and faces to these these people and to the events that they go through, and they can tell us our, their story first time. And I, I can't, you know, describe how powerful that is to be able to go through that and to listen to people talking about their struggles. It, it really puts life in a completely different perspective. I've got to say to you, Ed, um, I really do admire um, the way that you're, you're talking about such an important cause. I mean, you know, if you were to look at your band editors, you know, so far you, you've released two platinum studio albums, several million combined sales. Of course, you've also received a Mercury Prize nomination, as I mentioned earlier. You, you that was enjoy a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> but, you know, still you enjoy sold out tours and, and headlining yeah. festivals as well. So you're a busy, busy band. So it's often when Sonny and I talk to bands who've had the level of success that you have and still do um the lot of the time it's just focus on the music whereabouts yeah. has this kind of you know um purpose maybe come for editors uh, as a band to want to help and, and even just use your voice with um something like Oxfam and the charity because we don't often tend to get that with you know rock bands I've got to say yeah I think you're right. Um, probably if you rewind sort of five, six years ago, when we were younger, had less responsibilities, I think we would have sort of shied away from it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I never really thought that I would have 
uh, such strong outward views again about politics or just general goings on in the world and I definitely wouldn't have sort of um, imposed them on anybody else and I still don't think it's um, our job to preach to people but you know like you say we are very privileged we have a, a really good following throughout the world and we get to play to thousands of people pretty much every weekend especially throughout the summer um, so we do have a kind of slight, slight influence and if we can go to a place where people are enjoying themselves, go to a festival, for example, where people uh, have gone there with the sole intention of having fun. Mm. But if we can kind of walk away and, and having spoken about the experiences we've had, especially with Oxfam and, and uh, the, the, to try and raise a little bit of awareness of the problems that are going on within the world, I feel like we have more of a social responsibility now than ever. And, I, I th you know, we're living in a pretty weird time globally very true you know with with uh brexit or trump and whatever your opinions of, of those sort of political issues but then you've got this global refugee crisis which doesn't i mean it's slowed down slightly but maybe it hasn't maybe that's just what's in the news you know other things have taken over because it's been such a i don't know such a crazy period in our history I have to say, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Editors and their song, Cold. That's actually taken from their new album titled Violence. A very good afternoon. It is Sunny and Shay here on BBC WM 95.6. Now, you've been hearing from Ed Lay. He is the drummer in Birmingham band Editors. And uh, their new album, by the way, is uh, out now. Uh, recently, the band travelled to Syria. And we actually asked him whether this experience might in some way, shape or form affect their music moving forward? I think it probably will do in the long run. But right. uh, uh, yeah, as a, as a direct, um, uh, actually, uh, something that came out of our tri trip to Greece, we, yeah. we wrote a song and that Tom's lyrics for the song Hallelujah So Low were actually based upon his feelings about the visit. So, wow. so it has effect it affected them immediately on that one. But I just think generally we're going to be doing hopefully more things like this, trying to do more visits to, to places maybe further afield and, and really get to grips with how things are happening in our world that maybe we feel like we can't affect, but maybe we can. Now, you are alongside that, and I've got to ask you as well, because there are going to be a lot of fans who, you know, love you and have uh, followed you over the years. You're going to be at the O2 Academy on the 19th of October here yeah. in Birmingham. Uh, are you looking forward? How do you find it? Because, you know, you, you've already talked about the fact that you get to travel the world, right? But this is home, isn't it, when it comes to Birmingham? How do you guys feel about when you are performing to the home crowd in Birmingham? Well, we've just got such an affinity with the area, you know, um, sort of Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Staffordshire, that <laughs> kind of, it's, it's our it's our place, you know, this is, that's where we evolve, that's where we're allowed to grow up as a band and, and, and sort of stay out of trouble and, <laughs> I like that. And, and, write, and write the songs that we did initially that got us to where we, where we are, so... So is, I have to is. ask you, Ed, I have to ask you the question then, as a local uh, boy, uh, where's the best fish and chips? Uh, best well, fish and chips isn't the the strong point of that area. I oh, okay, say. go on. Um, but I'll give a shout out to High Tide Kebab uh, <laughs> hey. in, in in Kings Heath. I love it. I so, mean, that was uh, that that saved us many times. <laughs> <laughs> like so, that. is it like a homecoming when you come back? Does it feel? How does it feel for you when you're on a stage like, let's say, O2 Academy, and you're thinking about you know those early two thousands when you were starting off? How how is that feeling? I've got to ask you for you. It's it's great. I mean, we we've got a massive community of friends there. Above all, um, people that we were in, you know, bands with, growing, you know, as we grew, and they were playing shows when we were. So we, you know, people have had their families there. They've they've grown up a bit more, but they still want to come out and and kind of hang out with us, which is just great. Um, it's a cool place. I mean, the academy. We actually played pretty much the first night, I believe, of the when they opened. Um, a few years back now, but yeah. it was in 2009. Yeah, it was pretty. What an honour! Pretty mad. It was an honour. It completely, and that's yeah. the thing. It was. It's, it was an honour, and um, no matter that only one of us lives actually in Birmingham anymore. Yeah. It's still. The, it's still the place it's we still come home. to rehearse. Yeah. It's you know. It's we we store all our gear there. It's, <laughs> we've got links to it which can't be broken. You know, so it, it's going to be going to be a mega a mega night. I think the t the whole tour is going to be great. You know, we. 
we feel so positive about this new record and the way it's been received in the UK especially, you know, we're, we're just um, really happy to be doing a proper tour of it. Well, I'm really chuffed as well that, the, of course, um, the album itself is out now and, and uh, you can get more details on the website, editors-official.com, uh, album Violence. So why don't we play a track? Which track uh, do you recommend that we should play for our listeners now from the album? Oh, great. Um, do you know what? I think um, maybe our, it was our last single, actually. It's called Darkness at the Door. I think your guys would like it. Thank well, you so we much. We will play that. And Ed, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully we can get all of you guys here in the studio when you're next here together in Birmingham. Of course. We'd love to. Lovely to speak to you both. You too. Thanks you take care, mate. Us, Be Ed. safe. Take care. No worries. Thank you. Cheers.